The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The visitors were leading with one inning left to play. The Mudville fans in grim and gloomy melancholy sat until they saw that Casey was coming up to bat. Now Casey let two strikes go by. <laughs> he didn't like their style, but the fans all knew he'd hit the next a goodly country mile. So now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Yeah! Out! We have often heard the legend of Casey at the bat, but have you ever heard about what happened after that? No cheering fans were waiting as he finished his career. Just lovely Mrs. Casey with a secret for his ear. She whispered that a baby soon would come to bless their life. And Casey was all smiles as he hugged his pretty wife. For now he knew he'd have a son to carry on the name and unfurl the Casey banner in baseball's Hall of Fame. Mrs. Casey's little whisper soon became a mighty shout. I'm gonna be a daddy! And cigars were handed out. The boys threw a baby shower for Casey's son and heir. The gifts were baseballs, masks and gloves, spiked shoes and bats to spare. When the fateful day arrived, Tom Casey changed his tone and Dr. Morton knew exactly who was on the phone. Answer the phone, will you? Uh, this is Casey. The doctor kept his schedule, leaving Casey on the phone. Hello? 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 Quiet! Uh, then the stork made his appearance, and the doctor headed home. Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin. Casey was so happy, there was little he could say. He's here, he told his neighbors. And they shouted back, Hooray! Casey was so enraptured, he nearly lost his mind. The kid was a natural, a fantastic baseball find. Yeah. There was something Mrs. Casey had wanted to explain, but old Casey wouldn't listen, so he had himself to blame. As mother's little helper, he dressed their pride and joy, when in the bassinet he found a girl! Not a boy. As time went by, old Casey grew accustomed to his fate. His life was sad, till once again, that whisper from his mate. Then Casey screamed, there's three! And into the bedroom darted. Three girls, said Dr. Morton and sensibly departed. Casey's batting average didn't show a single hit. And finally, even Casey knew there comes a time to quit. Just one look at the doctor made Casey start to foam. And then the girls would have to drag their poor old daddy home. <laughs> the boys felt sad for Casey, till Cooney realized how often life's misfortunes may be blessings in disguise. So Flynn was sent to tell Casey what the boys had to propose. He said, just see what's going on right underneath your nose. Your girls are baseball players, and they're all right on the beam. Casey'd raised nine daughters, a ladies baseball team. Now all these sudden changes brought joy to Casey's life. He even paid the doctor and was speaking to his wife. The Caseyettes make changes on the quiet Mudville scene. Nine mighty female Caseys made a wondrous baseball team. This heart just seemed to skip the day his girls were set to play for the female championship. Last call for Lotto. 
Get your knot holes Casey here. took his usual bows on this eventful day, but found himself outside the park as the game got underway. that this game would go astray. The girls were full of confidence. It was just another game. They knew they'd win it easily, adding luster to their fame. His girls were sure of victory. Good luck had just occurred with Jin on first, Peg on second, and Jan a hug in third. Come on, Patsy. The a strain girl. was breaking Casey, but Casey's girls felt great because Patsy, mighty Patsy, was advancing to the plate. There was ease in Patsy's manner as she stepped up to her place while Casey's brow was furrowed. A smile lit Patsy's face. The pitcher, growing nervous, was aware of Patsy's fame, but suddenly, mighty Patsy was taken from the game. The crowd was in a dither as the girls in horror sat until Colleen said, why, it's Daddy. He's coming up to bat. Casey knew it wasn't cricket, but they had to win this game. And when the first strike sailed by, he had his wig to blame. Patsy tried to intervene, but he heeded not her plea. The second strike found Casey overcome with modesty. Every eye was on the ball. As the pitcher let it go, the very air was shattered by the force of Casey's blow. The crowd went wild. They cheered and cheered. Broad smiles lit up their faces. Although it was Patsy hit the ball, Great Casey ran the faces.